With concern about the coronavirus surge, the holiday season upon us, and today, the UK, the first country to approve the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine with distribution to start next week. We want to go straight to the top to get some perspective. So today, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's top infectious disease specialist, joins us here on MTN. Dr. Fauci, thank you so much for your time. Good to be with you. Well, let's start with developing news today and your reaction to the announcement that the UK will start distributing the vaccine next week. Well, that's fine. They did not uh, scrutinize the data as carefully as our own FDA is doing. They're in the process of doing that now. It is very likely that vaccine will be begin to be distributed in the United States. Uh, the first batch from Pfizer likely on the 10th or 11th of December and for Moderna around the 18th of December. So the difference is really a matter of a week, a week and a half, not much difference at all. Okay, now back here in Montana, COVID-19 started very, very slow, but spread quickly this fall. In fact, here in our state, we've nearly had the same number of deaths in the last month that we've had in the seven months prior to that. Did you see this developing in rural states like this? You know, sorry to say I did, and we predicted it. When you're dealing with an infectious disease, there is no part of the country that is really safe or exempt from the kinds of difficulty that you are now experiencing in, in Montana. It was inevitable that sooner or later, since you have a population that has not been impacted, that you would, particularly now that the colder weather forces more indoor activities and you have a population that in fact may or may not be adhering as well as they should to the kinds of public health measures that people are talking about, universal wearing of masks, physical distancing, avoiding indoor congregate settings. It really depends upon whether or not you implement or deploy the public health measures. Okay, so with the truly cold temperatures on their way to Montana and the holiday season upon us, can you give us an assessment of where we are today and your biggest concerns across our country and even more specifically here in a rural state? Yeah, there are a few things that are of concern because the amount of community spread that is spread that is occurring generally from people who have no symptoms, innocent types of situations, a dinner party at home with friends and family where an individual who might be completely well and not know that they're infected infects the group, maybe one, two or more of the individuals. So there's the concern about community spread, particularly now as we're getting off the Thanksgiving season, which without a doubt, with the travel that goes on, with the family gatherings that occur, there will be a surge of a greater or lesser extent. I can't predict how bad it will be in Montana versus Idaho versus Minnesota, but throughout the United States as a whole, it very likely will have a surge of cases. You won't realize that until about two and a half weeks following the Thanksgiving holiday, because that's the lag in time from exposure to infection. The unfortunate aspect about that, that lands right before we get to the Christmas holiday, which could actually compound it even more. So this is a pretty pre precarious situation that we're in right now. You don't want people to modify greatly their holiday plans, but really the better part of safety would be to modify considerably the plans that you have for the holidays and try and keep gatherings to the immediate family group that you have, as opposed to having people who generally don't come into your household to come into your household. That's the problem. Okay, so here in Montana, tighter mandates are hotly debated. In fact, many Montanans, including some Republican state legislators, recently chose not to wear their masks inside the state capitol. What do you want to say to Montanans who are making this choice? Yeah, you know, I don't want to accuse them or in any manner or form be pejorative to them but I would ask them and almost plead with them to look at the data. We have 267,000 deaths and close to 14 million infections in this country. That if you have a state like Montana, which doesn't have a lot, you know, you have Billings, which has the major medical center there. You have about 25 ICU beds 
in that hospital. The last time we checked, you had more ICU patients than you had IC beds for them. That's a problem. If you continue to get infections and you overrun your healthcare capacity, that is going to be something that's going to be very disturbing because if then you're going to have to make decisions at who gets the bed or not, who gets the oxygen or not, that's a very, very difficult situation to be in, which is the reason why we plead with people to please take this seriously. This is a real problem. It's not fake news. It's not a hoax. It's real. Okay, so what can you say to Montanans to assure them that the vaccine will work and it is safe to take? Yeah, well, the process that came to that conclusion that the vaccine is safe and efficacious is the result of testings of literally tens of thousands of people, 30,000 people in the Moderna trial, 44,000 people in the Pfizer trial. The determination of the safety is made by an independent data and safety monitoring board, as well as the efficacy. They examine that independent of the company and independent of the administration and the government. They make a determination that it's safe and effective. They give the data to the company. The company presents it to the FDA and career scientists, not politicians, but career scientists determine if it is now ready to go into people. They do that in association with their own advisory committee, which is again, an independent advisory committee that advises them as to whether or not it's appropriate to make it available for people anywhere, including Montana. So the entire process is independent and transparent. So that kind of process tells me when the vaccine is ready and I get my turn, I definitely will take the vaccine. Okay, I know our communities and our workers are very tired right now. If you could deliver a message to our workers, our healthcare workers here in Montana, what would that be? Well, first, we recognize you as heroes. There's no doubt that the frontline healthcare workers, the doctors, the nurses, and the other members of the healthcare community are really the true heroes in putting themselves on the line every day, you know, risking their own safety and that of their families to do their job. They should be strongly commended and admired. The end is in sight, help is on the way. When the vaccine comes, as we get more and more people vaccinated, healthcare providers, people in nursing home, then a variety of other people who are high priority, within a period of a few months, we will have a substantial number of people vaccinated. That will relieve greatly the stress on the system. So to me, that's all the more incentive to hang in there, pull together. The end is in sight. We just don't want to give up and get exhausted and throw our hands in the air and say, you know, we just can't do it anymore. Just hang in there. This will end. And that was my next question. So how many months, how quickly is this actually going to turn around? Well, you know, the vaccine is going to be given in incremental fashion to the various people in the different priority groups. By the time you get to the normal man and woman in the street in Billings or in anywhere in Hamilton, wherever you wanna be, who's a 25, 30 year old person who's otherwise healthy, that likely will be somewhere in April where they will have open access to the trial. And then by the time you get through April, May, June, you'll have most of the people vaccinated so that you could start looking at some sort of return to a normality as we get through the summer and into the fall. So I anticipate and I hope that most everybody who has vaccine available will take it so that when we, the time we get to the fall term that the children can come back to school and feel completely safe. Okay, that's great news. Now it's a delicate balance to support our local businesses and restaurants. Right now in this season, we don't want more businesses to go under, but how can we succeed in doing that and staying safe? Well, you know, I do hope that you get relief, relief from the state and relief from the federal government. You know, it's easy to say, and I've said it, close the bars and keep the schools open. But if you're going to close the bars and limit the restaurant capacity, you've got to provide relief to the tavern and bar owners and to the restaurant owners. So that's the thing that I'm very much in favor of. And I speak about here in Washington, 
that when relief packages come, they make sure if they want to have the shop owners, the restaurant owners, the bar owners to be part of the solution, you've really got to support them. Do you go out to restaurants? You know, I don't. Uh, I, I do take out. I try to support the restaurants in my neighborhood. I live in Washington, D.C., and I have a group of five or six restaurants that my wife and I go to regularly. We don't want to abandon them. So what I do maybe two, three times a week or more, we just order by phone and go and pick it up and eat it at home. So at least they get our business, but I don't sit in the restaurant. Okay. You are on President Trump's coronavirus task force. You have not yet been named to President-elect Biden's task force. Is this a role you'd like to continue under our next president? Well, I'm certainly going to stay in my job as the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and I'm fairly certain that the Biden team is going to want me to continue. Okay. Now, if or when you write a book on COVID, what do you think your opening paragraph will say? How will you sum up what we are going through? Yeah, it was the best of times and the worst of times, <laughs> for sure. What would be the best of times in this period? I think the bravery of our healthcare providers, like you mentioned, the fact that in record time, the fastest in the history of the planet, that we went from identifying the virus to getting a vaccine that's highly efficacious, that has never been even approached in the history of medicine. All right. Well, here in Montana, we are pretty proud of our state. So once there's a handle on this virus, you might want to come visit us. Well, you, I don't know whether you're aware, but one of my very, very best laboratories is in your state, in oh, Hamilton, in Montana. In Hamilton, yes, I did the know Rocky that, actually. Laboratories. That is the laboratory of my institute, so. Okay, well, we're on the yeah. eastern side of the state. I'm already in Montana. <laughs> yes, you are, I'm glad. Well, all right, thank you very much, Dr. Anthony Fauci, for your time and insight as we all try to work through this. Thank you for having me.